Hey, I'm Brent, you're watching Steam Culture. Hope you had a great Christmas break. Today we're gonna to show you how steam helped the Klondike gold miners back in the day bring the good stuff out of the ground. Stay tuned. All right, so when gold miners in the late 1800s decided they needed to move north to find more gold, they ran into something they didn't find in the south called permafrost, which means the first at least 12 inches of ground is permanently frozen, and they didn't have a solution for it. The best thing they could come up with was to use these enormous fires to melt uh, the gravel, and it melted very slowly, so it was very, uh, it was very cumbersome. It was very, uh, took a lot of time. And here's how the mining worked. They actually would drill a vertical mine and then they would have horizontal mines coming out. So if you can imagine them dropping fires down, 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 and then horizontally, they were filling the mine shafts with carbon monoxide. And again, it wasn't very quick and they were having a lot of problems. Well, a steam solution came along purely by accident. In 1898, a miner by the name of Clarence Berry was using a steam powered hoist to pull logs up uh, after they cleared a piece of land off, pull the logs up the hill. And uh, he noticed that one of the steam lines was leaking steam and was actually drilling a hole down into the gravel by the use of steam. And a light bulb moment went off and he realized we could probably use steam. Fast forward to the solution is they created what's called a steam point, which is a big steel uh, rod with holes in it. They would pound that into the ground, connect a steam hose to it, and they would melt the permafrost way more efficiently. That grew into an actual large area or field of these steam rods being pounded into the ground. So what they started doing is they would actually start in the ground, make the vertical shaft, then they would take those steam points, if you will, down into the vertical shaft and literally help drill out with the use of steam. So great solution. Now, the problem with that was when they started to do it on a larger scale, the first season they burned 250 cords of wood, which means someone has to cut 250 cords of wood, plus it's a lot of wood. So what they really figured out is they could do it with ambient temperature, air did just as an efficient job. But the whole thing started because Clarence Berry found a steam leak and realized that he could melt permafrost with steam. So there you go, the Klondike Gold Rush. Here's another cool thing, it's in the Coal Creek Preserve, which is in the uh, Alaskan National Preserve. They've left everything, so if you are ever in the Alaskan National Preserve, you'll be able to see the boilers. Fun fact, the boilers that were used to provide the steam to the steam points to melt the permafrost were pulled by dog sled, and they were small and boxy and looked like a house, so they combined the two and they were known as doghouse boilers. So you can go see those on the Alaskan National Preserve because again, they left them all there as part of history to preserve that. So go check it out, Google. Before you do that, Google us, come and stop and see. We'll have content for you each and every week. Catch you a boiling point while you're there. I will see you next week.